my dear students i hope uh, the day started good with your breakfast and uh, we will start the day with a great hope that we will learn something new in a better way in our last class we discussed about the constraints the outcome of the last class are nothing but the constraints we discussed about the constraints you are hang the domain constraints assertions referential integrity constraints and of course we have the um privileges that is uh, other authorizations authorizations this is what we discussed in our last class about the constraints and also we discussed about database architecture in da under database architecture we discussed about uh, uh, some layers some file layers that is users layer application programs query processors storage manager and disk storage and database architecture we discussed about the users different types of users that is nav users sophisticated users specialized users database administrators some types of users we discussed under database uh, architecture and you are hang the next layer is some application programs you are hang query processors query processors storage managers and disk storage this is what dis we discussed under database architecture you might have visualized a diagram a big diagram which is nothing but the diagram of database architecture and also we had a discussion on entire architecture that is a two tier architecture three tier architecture generally if we go with the client server technology we go with the two tier architecture and if the same client server technology if you with the web applications then the client application uh, will interact with the server application the server application will interact the server application will be interacting with the database the server application will be interacting with the database this is nothing but a two tier architecture three tier architecture and if number of tiers gets increased the maintenance becomes easy uh, and if any component is to be replaced only that component can be replaced need not uh, disturb the entire stuff and th that is called as the entire architecture also we discussed about the storage manager in our last class to organize storage and files to organize the storage and files that is reason it is managing the storage the buffer it manages the files it manages and of course the data dictionaries there will be some internal concepts called data dictionaries we discuss about that in detail later uh, all the storage related things will be managed by storage manager and of course you are having a query processors the users will be asking some questions whether the questions are being uh, in the right shape or not and the queries if they are very lengthy they can be optimized with the help of query processors transaction managers in our last class we also discussed about the transaction management that is concurrency control when multiple transactions comes at a time onto the same piece of data then the concurrency is being managed by transaction manager that is nothing but the concurrency control the concurrency control is being done by the transaction manager this is what we discussed in our last class that is last episode now in this episode we are going to learn and the outcomes of this episode the outcomes of this episode should be it should be the outcomes of this episode should be database users we will discuss who are database users we will discuss about some database designing concepts under database designing concepts we are going to discuss about er diagrams entity relationship diagrams under e entity relationship diagrams we are going to discuss about entities attributes entity sets and also we are going to discuss about relationships relationship sets similarly we are going to discuss about the binary relation ternary relation and anary relation by end of this class you should come to know about all this that should be our outcomes of this class my dear students be alert we are going to start our class today's class database users and administrator let us have a discussion on database users and administrators database users and administrators there are four types of users one is nav users the first one is nav users the second one is application programmers third one is sophisticated users and the fourth one is specialized users the persons who work with the database are called database users once again i just repeat who makes use of database are called database users we store lot of data into the hard disk into the magnetic media 
we dump lot of data into the hard disk that is a magnetic media when we dump lot of data into the magnetic media that data is being used by multiple users and users can be categorized as nav users application programmers sophisticated users and the fourth one is specialized users you need to memorize my dear students now itself you memorize one is nav users second is application programmers third is sophisticated users fourth is specialized users fourth is specialized users you are having different types of users one is nav users the second is application programmers and the third 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 is sophisticated user third sophisticated users fourth 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 is specialized users fourth is specialized users memorize memorize please please memorize please memorize one nav users second application programmers three sophisticated users three sophisticated users four specialized users dear students you need to memorize the different types of uh, users are one nav users two two is application programmers and third one is specialized users third one is specialized users the fourth one yes, is sophisticated users sophisticated specialized users and specialized users sophisticated users is third and fourth is specialized users good now we'll discuss about nav users i hope you by hearted all this stuff now we go with the nav users nav users are the person who knows nothing about the database but with the help of uh, an application program with the help of an application program which is developed by third party they will be interacting with the database and they will be using they are called nav users the nav users they don't have any knowledge on database how to create the database how to store into the database they, they know nothing they are called nav users for example you go to atm machine for example you go to atm machine you go to an atm machine atm machine someone developed the program they st the stored in the machine it will be asking question you will be giving data enter your pin code you will be giving please insert card that will read the data from your card that will read the data so you don't know what data is there what is being stored how to store no one knows but you will be interacting with an application program which is written by someone right you will be interacting with the application programs which are written by someone and you will be interacting with the database for example you take an atm machine in atm machine in atm machine back end there will be a database here there will be there will be a database let me say this is the database this is database the database is sitting inside we don't know what data is there who created data no nothing is known the end user will come he will interact with this machine and uh, knowingly or unknowingly that data, data is being stored into the database into the hard disk knowingly or unknowingly he is able to access the database and he is able to enjoy the results he is called as a nav user for example you go with the railway reservation system railway reservation system you try to book some tickets to bombay you want to travel to vizag you want to travel to delhi so you are booking the tickets in the railway reservation counter the person will be operating the system do you feel he is a computer science engineer do you feel he is hang the good knowledge on database he knows nothing there will be one program the program will be asking question enter name enter number of tickets enter uh, date of journey enter number of tickets you require that's all it will be asking question this fellow will be interacting he will be giving the data he will be feeding the data and you are getting the ticket so the person who knows nothing but he will be interacting with some program which is written by someone else is called as nav user that fellow is being called as a nav user i hope it is clear the second one is application programmer the second one is nothing but application programmers application programmers the application programmers are computer professionals they are having some knowledge they are professionals application programmers are nothing but uh, computer professionals they are having some knowledge they are having depth knowledge of how to create the data how to store the data they are having some knowledge they develop some application programs they write some programs and with the help of programs they will be interacting with the database so nav users are those who don't have knowledge whereas the application programmers are those who are having complete knowledge with the help of some programs they develop some programs either in java or python or c 
and with which they will be interacting with the database they are called as application programmers now sophisticated sophisticated users the sophisticated users are those users the sophisticated users are those users who work for the database with the help of database queries they don't develop application programs but they know what is query languages there are certain languages which are called database query languages for example sql oracle sybase mongo database ingress paradox informix elastic databases elastic databases so there are some queries there are some queries with the help of queries they are able to interact with the database and they are able to oh, manipulate the data or watch the data or process the data so these are also sophisticated users sophisticated users the name itself says they are sophisticated with the knowledge or how to of how to access the data how to manipulate the data they are called sophisticated users i hope the point is clear the sophisticated users are the users who are having the tremendous knowledge of fetching the data preserving the data with the help of query languages there there are certain languages called as a query languages sql structured query language i'll teach you sql uh, i i'm confident that i can make you masters in the structured query language with the help of query languages certain structured query languages they request the data they pull the data or they store the data they are called sophisticated users there is another category of users called as a specialized users the another category of users called specialized users they use this data for a non traditional purpose what is a traditional what is non traditional what is traditional what is non traditional the traditional is a commercial application database traditional applications are the commercial applications the commercial applications are nothing but the banking sector business applications educational applications all these comes under the commercial applications that is a traditional use but the specialized users will use the database for non 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 traditional they use this for non traditional purpose they use the database for non traditional purpose like knowledge based system like computer aided design system they are not commercial they are scientific they are designing designing applications generally database is used for commercial applications but these fellows that is a specialized users are the users the specialized users are those users who use the database for non traditional non commercial it may be scientific it may be designing it may be graphical applications for which these users will be using they are called specialized users remember coming to the database users you are having nav users application programmers specialized sophisticated users and specialized users you need to memorize all these all these users nav users application programmers special sophisticated users and specialized users these are uh, different types of specialized users they use the database for non traditional purpose what is traditional purpose what is non traditional traditional purpose is a commercial application for example you take a supermarket in supermarket and malls all the product details price quantity sold and all that is being stored so for which the data is being dumped into the, into the disk that is a commercial that is called traditional application you take bank a customer will come they will deposit they will withdraw the amount they take loans that is a commercial application that is a traditional application our regular applications are called traditional applications commercial applications traditional applications but these specialized users will not use database for regular applications they use for non commercial applications non traditional applications they use for a specialized applications like cad computer aided design knowledge based systems artificial intelligence machine learning and many other specialized applications non commercial applications they will use that type of users are called specialized users are you getting they will not use for routine purpose they use for something different the persons who use for something different not routine are called specialized users these are the different types of database users available nav users application programmers uh, sophisticated users and specialized and specialized users specialized users these are the different types of database users available
now we will discuss about database administrator the person who can administrate the entire database is called dba stands for database administrator you have the here the person who can administrate the entire data is called as database administrator the person who can administrate administrate the entire data is called database administrator generally the client server technology you observe the diagram here you observe the diagram here this is a centralized server let me say this is a centralized server all the clients all the users are storing the data the data is being stored in the centralized server sir, client one slide is not visible sir really Yes, sir. No, sir. It is visible, sir. Okay. It is visible, sir. It may take some time, sir. Okay. Okay. Right. Thank you. Here, you observe the diagram. This is a he. This is a centralized server. Let me say this is the centralized server. This is the client one or user one or client one. Let me call is a client one. Is a client one. This is client two. The second person. Client two and so on. Client three, client four, client five, and so on. There, these are all the different clients who got connected to who got nth client. He is the nth client who got connected to the centralized server. All these clients, all these clients got connected to the centralized server. All are storing the data that is being stored in the centralized database. There should be some administrator to control all these operations. there should be some administrator to control all these operations right to control 60 students you are having one class in charge are the class teacher to control the class teachers to control various class teachers you will be having some head of the departments to control all the head of the departments there will be some principal so similarly here to control all these clients all these clients data not to control the clients all the data of clients sent by clients the client one is sending some data client two is sending the data client three four five all are sending the data they are pushing the data that is being stored in the server then there should be some person to take care of this entire database which is being created by the instances by the instances by the data of different clients this person is called database administrator he is a authorized person to control this entire data data which is coming from the clients this is the person who will control the entire database the person who can administrate the entire data in database is called database administrator that is in short we are calling it as a dba stands for database administrator you have seen here the responsibility of database administrator are schema definition you need to memorize you need to memorize schema definition scheme schema structure and access method definition schema structure and access method definition schema and physical organization methods granting authorization and da data accessing routine maintenance periodical backup periodical backup ensuring enough disk space performance monitoring all these are the activities of database administrator i just repeat what are the roles and responsibilities of database administrator the responsibilities of database administrator are schema definition storage structure and access method definition storage structure and access method definition schema and physical organization modification schema and physical organization modification granting of authorization of data accessing for data access routine maintenance regular maintenance periodical backup you need to take some backup ensuring enough free disk space performance monitoring all these are the responsibilities of the database uh, administrator dba what is uh, meant by schema definition what is meant by schema definition suppose all these clients are storing the data in order to store the data basically there should be a schema that is structure there should be a structure like employee number there should be a structure like employee name there should be structure like a department and uh, employee number there should be numeric field name should be a character field department is an integer field salary is a integer field of maximum 9 digits or 10 digits 
and all this schema or the structure is to be defined by someone that someone is nothing but the dba that is the database administrator he is the unique person who is the authorized person to define the schema what to store what not to store is being defined by this person he is called as a dba database administrator as per the definitions of database administrators the rest of the clients the rest of the clients the rest of the clients will be pushing the data or pulling the data from the database are you getting the point he is a person for defining the data he is a person of storage structure and access method how to see the data that is accessing how to access the data data can be accessed in different ways suppose i want to see in descending order of salary suppose i want to see in ascending order of salary i want to see the data according to the department i want to see the data in ascending order of their names and how to see the data is being defined is being prescribed recommended by dba stands for database administrator schema and physical organization modifications sometimes we need to do some modifications employee number names uh, department and salary i store the data after few months i uh, i want to store hra that is house rent elements so the existing schema is to be modified because i want to store even house rent elements i am storing employee number i am storing name i am storing department i am storing salary even i want to store hra that is house rent elements then whose responsibility to add the house rent hra i want to store net salary this is the initial schema employee number name department and salary this is the initial schema after few days i want to store net salary whose responsibility to create net salary here it is a responsibility of dba database administrator that is a modification of existing schema the modifications of the existing schema is a responsibility of the dba schema and physical organization modifications granting authorizations for data accessing granting authorizations who should see who should not see who should see what who should not see what not listen to me carefully here many clients are there many users are there many clients many users are there all should not see the complete data who should see what data who should not see what not to see all these are being recommended by dba that that is the database administrator that is called authorization he will give the privileges and authorizations routine maintenance there will be some cleansing so sometimes some users will be sending some unwanted data some users will be sending wrong data some users may enter some typographical mistakes instead of 30000 i may enter something like 3000 one zero may be missing then some sort of maintenance is required for the existing data maintenance is required some cleansing is required some crunching is required some rounding is required in such cases all these sort of maintenance routine maintenance is done by this person he is called as a dba he will take care of maintenance activities backup backup suppose because of some disaster situations if the database fails finish everything is gone from let me say from 5 years the data is being stored in this database from past 5 years hundreds of clients are storing the data into the database data is being stored in the database all of the sudden because of the power fluctuations or high voltage if this data gets failed then everything is lost the past 5 years efforts is gone into veins that should not happen and hence he is the responsible person to take periodical backup every day evening every day evening generally what they do is every day evening they take up the they take up the backup copy into the magnetic tapes or magnetic drums nowadays the backup is being stored into a cloud the entire data which is available in our system is being stored into cloud now you are having a cloud servers storage servers now the entire data is being stored into the cloud servers so they will take a backup suppose because of floods because of earthquakes because of fire accidents because of something else if data gets damaged no problem they will recover they will recover back the data that is the duty of database administrator taking backup and recovery taking backup 
and recovery is the another duty of database administrator. I hope you are following what is meant by backup. Ensuring free disk space. Ensuring free disk space. All the users will be storing the data. When all users are storing the data into the database, when all users are storing, the disk space will be coming down. And sometimes they may face the problem of inefficient, insufficient disk space. Insufficient disk space. Uh, the data is flooding, flooded from the different clients. The data is flowing. The data is transferring from different clients to the centralized server. Then here the disk space gets filled up and some, at some point of time it shoots an error, no space to store. Then it is a responsibility of DBA to maintain free disk space. So he will be monitoring whether the disk space is available or not. If not, he need to add a new hard disks or new magnetic tapes or new drums or he need to do cleansing process to free the data to free the disk space and all these activities are being done by DBA stands for database administrator you are having performance monitoring this is a wonderful task performance monitoring what do you mean by performance monitoring speed storing the data getting the data is not important storing the data with speed getting the data with speed is important that is performance is important so storage is relevant to time how fast we are able to store, how fast we are able to get the data, that is important. So that is nothing but the performance monitoring, that is the speed is very very important and maintaining the speed is also the responsibility of DBA and hence the responsibility of the person DBA database administrator is 1. Schema definition, storage structure and access method definition, schema and physical organization modification, modification granting authorizations, routine maintenance, periodical backup, periodical backup, ensuring enough disk space and performance monitoring. All these are the responsibilities of the person. DBA stands for database administrator. These are the responsibilities of the person. DBA stands for database administrator. I hope you memorized all these points. Good. Database design and DR diagrams. Let us proceed to the next topic, database design and ER diagram. Let us proceed to the next topic, database design and ER diagrams. When you are developing the mega projects, big projects, listen to me carefully, dear students. Later, within two years, now already you are in the second year. In a span of two years, you are going to enter into the big companies, multinational companies, glassy companies, worldwide, international companies you are going to join. There you will be working with mega projects, big projects you need to design the database. For example, a super speciality hospital which is having branches all over the world. So, by, uh, for example, you are asked to develop for a global banking system who, whose branches are across the globe. You may be asked to develop a database for the credit card, visa card system which is having the international branches across the globe. So you are developing software's database to store the data for the international companies. My dear students, today you may be in the college sitting on the benches or as of now you may be at your residence. But in two years time span there is a big metamorphic change. You are going to transform into the beautiful professionals where you are going to do work for, you are going to discharge your services for international companies. Right. In this context, you are going to face the mega projects. When big projects are given, assigned for you and if you are asked to design database for that, simply like that you should not design the database. There are six steps. Remember, there are six steps to be followed while designing the database. There are six important steps. There are six important steps to be followed while designing the database. Six important steps to be followed while designing the database. The six steps are one requirement analysis. Memorize one require and the same order is to be followed. The same order is to be followed. One requirement analysis. Second conceptual database design. Third logical design. Third logical design. Fourth schema refinement, fifth physical database design, 
and sixth application and security design the same order is to be maintained same order is to be maintained in order to design a database mega databases big databases you need to follow six steps the six steps are one is requirement analysis the second is conceptual database design the second is conceptual database design the third one is logical logical database design fourth one is schema refinement fifth is physical database design and sixth is application and security design once again i just repeat you need to follow the same order the same steps to design the database for mega projects for huge projects for mammoth amount of projects right for elephantiac projects you need to follow these steps while designing the database one is requirement analysis the first step is requirement analysis second is conceptual database design third is logical database design fourth is schema refinement fifth is physical database design sixth is application and security design i just repeat repeat you memorize one requirement analysis that is the first step gathering the requirements second conceptual database design third is logical database design fourth is schema refinement fifth is physical database design sixth is application and security design now we will have a discussion a detailed discussion on these steps let us have the detailed discussion on these steps first is requirement analysis requirement analysis requirement gathering is while while you are developing a, a database for a hospital let me say you are asked to develop a database design you are asked to design a database for a hospital then first you should consult first you need to consult the doctors what they require what is their requirement why they are going for the computer system when there is a manual system why they are opting for computer system you need to ask their requirements why you require this database please let us know also you should know what is the existing system present how you are maintaining the patients how you are maintaining wards how you are maintaining beds how you are maintaining the nursing staff how you are maintaining the inpatients how you are maintaining the outpatients how you are maintaining the doctors how you are maintaining the operation theaters that is ot's how you are maintaining the inquiries how you are maintaining the reception counter so what are those registers what is the present existing system you need to analyze that is nothing but requirement analysis what is the present system that is to be studied that is requirement analysis and what you are expecting from us you need to know that is requirement analysis actual requirement what the end user is expecting you need to know you need to understand you need to analyze that that is called requirement analysis understand 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 what data is to be stored what is the requirement find out the users want to database find out what what find out what 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 is the requirement what the users want what the users want that is to be known that is called requirement analysis this is usually the informal process that involves the discussions you need to have a discussion with the user you need to talk to the user you need to know the inner feeling of the user you need to know the mind of the user you know you need to know the intention of the users and gather the requirements that is called requirement analysis you need to study the current operations what current operations presently what you are doing why you are uh, demanding for the computerization automation why you are demanding when the present system is going on then why again you are asking for the database you need to know you need to study the available documents present available documents existing applications you need to study and finally you need to come to conclusion oh ho, these are the requirements of the end user that's what you need to understand that is called requirement analysis i hope you are following why these end users are asking for uh, computerization modernization database what is their intention you need to study existing is uh, existing system is to be studied that is called requirement analysis then after requirement analysis you need to go with the conceptual design the second stage is conceptual design the second step is conceptual design conceptual design is a very high level description high level means a rough idea you need to go with the rough idea oh ho he requires to store the employee data he want to store the department's data he want to store this he want to store that a rough idea 
that is a rough sketch on the overall data on overall organization is nothing but the conceptual design in this while going with the conceptual de design we go with er models in the conceptual design we go with the overall uh, er models er diagrams employee for every employee let us store employee number name and salary for em every employee we need to store the details of employee we go with this rough diagrams these are called er diagrams we want to store the employee database for employee database we need to store employee number we need to store name we need to store salary this rough sketch diagrams we will draw this is called er diagram just i'll give you an example on conceptual database an analogy conceptual database for example there is a there is a student let me say this student's name is kiran the name of this student is kiran let me say his name is kiran i'll say he want to become he want to complete his 10th class he want to complete his 10th class first next he want to complete his intermediate a rough travel i'm i'm drawing he want to complete his intermediate later he want to complete his btech he want to complete his engineering let me say he want to complete his engineering and then he want to become a software engineer a software engineer a software engineer just i'm giving a rough 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 this is called high level design a software engineer finally he want to get settled in america like usa he want to get settled in usa america that's all his life is settled finished right this is only a rough sketch this is called high level design this is called high level design high level design this design is called high level design similarly while designing oh we need to have a high level design oh ho ho this fellow want to store the data of employees this fellow want to store the data of departments this fellow want to store the data of products this fellow want to store the data of sales that's all with this he want to do calculate this a rough idea we give that is called as a conceptual design here we don't talk about uh, uh, oracle sql java no no technical background we don't talk about the technical stuff and uh, our design should be understood by non technical persons also the persons who don't have any technical knowledge also should be in a position to understand by these sort of diagrams these diagrams are called er diagrams by seeing these er diagrams the non technical guys also should be in a position to understand what is that what is the design going to do this is called conceptual design this type of design is called conceptual design so first is requirement analysis the second is conceptual design first is requirement analysis the second is conceptual design now we go with bit detailed design that is called logical database design bit detailed design which is called as a logical database design so employee number name salary we want we want something like employee number we want something like name we want something like salary we require this right bit detailed the diagrammatical form should be converted with some other extra stuff with database schema specification schema is structure employee number let us take it as a numeric field employee number this is a numeric field and name employee name employee name is nothing but character it is a character field character field salary let the salary be be a numeric field so we will just elaborate this sometimes it is called logical design and we do the diagrams are being converted something like a schema structure schematic structure on paper on paper right this is called as a logical database design the first is requirement analysis the second is conceptual design and the third is third one is logical database design memorize the first one is requirements requirement analysis the second is conceptual database design third is logical database design and now comes to schema refinement schema refinement for example i thought this is very good lecturer for example for a college i am going to design lecturer the details of lecturers it he contains the lecturer number that is social security number similar to aadhar card that is lecturer number i will be hang some lecturer number i will be hang some lecturer number name and subject the subject what that lecturer is handling 
So I felt this is damn good. This structure is good, I felt. I want to store the details of student also. So I thought of storing student number, student name and total. Even this is good. But when you are relating lecturer and student, there may be certain things which are disturbing, which are hampering, they are not compatible. Then we should remove them. Then we should remove them. We to directly think of lecturer. We come out with certain details I am interested to store. Similarly, we think of student. I want to store some details of student. When both are related, lecturer and student are related, lecturer and student are related, there may be some conflicts with some fields. Those fields are to be removed. Means you are going refinement. You are doing refinement. You are relating different entities. While relating different entities, there are certain attributes which are to be removed, which are to be added. Those are called schema refinement. So we do some modifications in the existing schema, what we previously thought. This is nothing but schema refinement. refinement. Dear students, the first point is requirement analysis. Second is conceptual database design. Third is logical database design. And fourth one is schema refinement. Schema refinement is a fourth uh, step of the database design. And the next one is physical database design. Physical database design. Now practically using some computer language. Now practically using some computer language we design. That is called physically we are designing, not logically. Logically means on paper. Now physically in the system, physical database design we do. And while designing you need to look after the performance. Not just designing. You should look into the performance. That is the speed. In order to increase the speed we need to go with indexes. Indexes will increase the speed. There is a concept called index. I will teach you what is meant by index. With the help of index structures, you can increase the speed. Speed of performance. Performance. And also with the help of clustering, you can save the space, disk space. While going with the physical database design, where physically we store the data into the database. Physically, when you store the data into the database, physical database design, then we need to look into the performance. That is the speed. Performance is nothing but the speed. Indexing performance and clustering. The clustering concept is used to save the disk space. If at all you want to save the disk space, you need to go with the clustering. If you want to increase the speed, then you need to go with the performance and indexing concept. Speed and storage, both are very, very important factors. And the sixth one, you are having application and security design. This is very important, security. I will store the data into the disk. If my data is being disturbed by unauthorized users, there is, it is meaningless. I store the data with a lot of pains in my database. If someone deletes the data, everything is in vain. So there is a problem. And hence, we should give the highest priority for security. So security, privileges and authorizations are very important. And the sixth step is after designing, we try to impose a lot of securities. That is locking the database only for the youth authorized users. Locking. We need to lock it. Lock the database. Right. That is nothing but the security. There are some languages like UML, Unified Modeling Language. UML stands for Unified Modeling Language. So it is a design modeling language with which the application programs are being designed, which suits the database. And also we try to design some security concepts so that unauthorized users, so that unauthorized users cannot penetrate into the database. So this is nothing but uh, about the database design of uh, designing using ER diagrams. Generally, ER diagrams are used for first three steps. As I told you, the first three steps are nothing but requirement analysis, uh, conceptual database design, and logical database design. The first three steps, what I explained to you, is the requirement analysis, conce conceptual database design, logical database design. And after that, you will come to schema refinement, physical database design, application, and uh, security design. These are the six steps you need to stringently follow, stipulously follow to design a good database. Let us proceed to the next topic, entities and entity sets. The next topic what we are going to discuss is entities and entity set. What is ent entity? An entity is an object of real world and it may be a concrete or abstract in nature is called as an entity. An entity is anything, anything which is concrete or abstract in nature in this world or the universe can be called as an entity.
For example, I will say employee is an entity, department is an entity, car is an entity, student is an entity, window is an entity, door is an entity, curtain is an entity, flower vase is an entity, computer is an entity, cell phone is an entity, book is an entity, specs is an entity, calendar is an entity, uh, file is an entity, wash basin is an entity, building is an entity, employee is an entity, collector is an entity, doctor is an entity, dog is an entity, cat is an entity, anything can be called as an entity. Anything which is concrete or abstract in nature can be pronounced as an entity. A concrete entities are those entities which is having a defin definite shape and structure is called as a concrete entity and which don't have a proper definition, shape and structure is called abstract entities. For example, if I say house, you can touch it. If I say chair, you can touch it. You are having a proper definition of chair. Those are all called concrete entities. So suppose if I say, if I say beauty, what is beauty? You can't define. If I say pain, what is pain? You can't define. If I say accident, what is that? You can't define. If I say holiday, what is the shape of holiday? I can define the shape of chair. If I say house, I can define the shape of house. If I say holiday, what is the shape of holiday? You can't. Are you getting it? And all these comes under the abstract entities. So anything can be called as an entity. An entity is an object of the real world that is distinguished from other objects. That is distinguished. Means that entity should be distinguished from other object which is called as an entity. It can be distinguished from another object is called as an entity. Right? That is called as an entity. Example, employee, department, car and student. This is called entity. If similar entities are grouped, you get an entity set. For example, employee. Group of employees is called an entity set. Set of employees. I say car. Car is an entity. If I say set of cars, it is called entity set. This entity set is represented with a rectangular box. Observe carefully. Observe carefully the diagram, ER diagrams. The entity set is represented by a rectangular box. I'm calling it as an employee. Means here entity set. This is an entity set. Means there are many employees and every employee is having social security number. That is employee number, name and job. What job he is doing. This is called as an entity and these are called attributes. Listen carefully. This is called entity. Employee is an entity. This entity is identified. This entity is being identified by employee number. That is social security number, the name and job. These are called attributes. The attributes are always depicted with the help of rectangular, I'm sorry, with the help of ellipse. An entity is represented with a rectangle. Entity is represented with the help of rectangle and attributes are represented, attributes are represented, attributes are represented with ellipse. With the help of attributes, we'll be identifying the employee. I'll say employee number is 101, name is Prem, name is Prem, job is HOD, head of the department. So this employee number is 101, name is Prem, job is HOD, head of the department or the professor, job is professor and this is nothing but the details of lecturer. The lecturer is being identified by lecturer number, lecturer name and the job. These are called attributes, the elliptical forms are called attributes and this rectangle form is called as an entity. Entity is identified with the help of attributes. I hope so you are able to differentiate what is entity, entity set, entity, entity set. A group of similar entities, group of similar entities becomes an entity set. Now let us go ahead with attributes and attribute domain, attribute and attribute domain. As I told you previously, for example, a person is an entity. Person is identified by name of person, age of person and qualification of person. Every person is identified by name of person, age of person and qualification of the person. These are called attributes and this is called entity. For every attribute, there should be an attribute domain. For every attribute, there should be an attribute domain. For example, name. It is a group of characters. That is attribute domain. Age. It is a digits and it can be from 20 years, 25 years to 60 years. This is called domain of this attribute age. For age, the domain is 25 to 60 years. Qualification. The qualification either can be degree or PG. It can be either degree or PG or others. That's called qualification. This is called domain. Degree, PG and others is nothing but the domain of qualification. So every attribute will be having certain value. The values will 
uh, obey certain limits which we are calling attribute domain for example age age of a person it can lie in between 20 years to 60 years let me say that is my definition of age 25 years to 60 years then this becomes the domain value of the attribute age this 25 to 60 years that becomes the domain value for the attribute age it becomes the domain value for the attribute age are you getting it so you came to know what is meant by entity what is meant by entity you came to know what is meant by attribute you came to know what is meant by the domain of attributes the domain of attributes right so entity attributes and domain of attributes relationship and relationship set let us just have the discussion on relationship and relationship set relationship and relationship set for example a lecturer is an entity he is identified by lecturer number name and subject what he is teaching student is an entity student is being identified by student number name and total the lecturer is identified by lecturer number name and subject what he is teaching student is identified identified by student number name and total and of course this entity set and this entity set are related because the lecturer teaches student so there is a relation the lecturer teaches student there is a relation between this entity set and this entity set in real world situation always there will be relationship sets between two entities for example a lecturer is teaching uh, a student a doctor is uh, treating patient a patient is purchasing medicines from medical stores a patient is an entity set and medical stores is an entity set a patient and medical stores are related patient is purchasing medicines from uh, medical stores there is a relation relation the relation is being identified by a diamond symbol by a diamond symbol by a diamond symbol and we tie we write the type of relation lecturer teaches student the lecturer teaches student for example here there is a doctor doctor treats patient patient is an entity set this is called this is called this is called relationship set if between two single entities let me say he is a lecturer he is a student lecturer and student if there is a single relation that is called relationship if there are set of lecturers and set of students set of lecturers and set of stu students then this is called relationship set between single it is relationship between multiple it is relationship set relationship set that we we call so i hope you are able to follow what is a relationship it relates relationship relates different entities different entities lecturer is an entity student is an entity these two are related in what way it is related teachers lecturer teaches student doctor treats patient that's a nothing but the relation we call it as a relationship or relationship set there is a concept called descriptive attributes descriptive attributes generally for entity sets for entity sets there will be attributes for example uh, here lecturer number name and subject for entity set there will be attributes for student you are hang attribute student number name and total but for relationship set also sometimes for relationship set also sometimes there will be attribute for example lecturer is teaching students fine from past 6 months this lecturer is teaching students now that 6 months uh, does not belong to student that 6 months does not belong to lecturer it belongs to both it belongs to both listen to me carefully lecturer number is lecturer attribute name is attribute of lecturer this is lecturer name subject is attribute it exclusively belongs to lecturer fine good student number is, totally belongs to student student name belongs to student total belongs to student fine these are all these uh, attributes belongs to student this lecturer is teaching students this lecturer is teaching students from past 3 months now that 3 months is neither the attribute of lecturer nor the attribute of student it belongs to both and hence that is the attribute you need to give for the relationship set that is the attribute you need to give for the relationship set this is called descriptive attribute this attribute which you define for the relationship set is called descriptive attribute this is called a descriptive attribute i hope the I, I hope so the point is clear what is meant by descriptive attribute right the attribute which you define for the relationship set is called descriptive attribute so 
डियर स्टूडेंट्स विथ दिस आई कंक्लूड विथ दिस आई कंक्लूड विथ दिस आई कंक्लूड टूडेज क्लास विथ दिस आई कंक्लूड टूडेज क्लास इन टूडेज क्लास वी हैड अ डिस्कशन ऑन डेटा बेस यूजर्स एडमिनिस्ट्रेटर्स डेटा बेस डिजाइन एंड द सिक्स स्टेप्स आर टू बी फॉलोड द सिक्स स्टेप्स टू बी फॉलोड अंडर डेटा बेस डिजाइन आई होप सो यू मेमोराइज द सिक्स स्टेप्स दैट इज रिक्वायरमेंट एनालिसिस कॉन्सेप्चुअल डेटा बेस डिजाइन लॉजिकल डेटा बेस डिजाइन स्कीमा रिफाइनमेंट फिजिकल डेटा बेस डिजाइन application and security design these are the six steps to be followed while designing database you came to know what is entity attributes and entity sets similarly you came to know what is relationship relationship sets this is what uh, we learned in the class these are the outcomes of today's class dear students with this we will conclude today's class thank you very much and have a wonderful bright day rock bye bye